Um, uh, welcome everyone. This is the weekly IPLD Zoom call. It's um, October the 7th. Um, and as every week, we go through the stuff that we've been working on and then we discuss any open agenda items we have. Um, and as every week, I dare to start with myself. Um, as I'm sure that my stuff is in the hackpad. So last week I'm, I spent a lot of time on the um, spec stuff. So I did um, a bit of work on the iPod TV selectors examples because there was interest from some someone from the IPFS weekly call. Um, because they like to have something like um, queries on iPod TV, which is exactly what iPod TV selectors are about. But uh, the spec wasn't that easy to understand if you don't know about schema. So I um, have got back to the examples. Um, some got merged, some are still in review. Then um, I worked on the DAG protocol buffer spec. Um, that's pretty close. There's still <coughs> an open issue about how, what we do with the pathing in the future. But there's an open issue um, linked from the spec PR uh, where we keep discussing. And other than specs, I worked a bit on the Rust stuff. Um, the good news is that it looks like I found someone that also wants to have tech support in Surrey um, who is working on it. So I will support him um, or her. Um, and we will then hopefully get um, tech support in Surrey, which means we could just use planes, hopefully then plain Surrey for all the IPLD data model stuff I want to do. Um, yeah, that's all I have. Um, next one on my list is Rod. So when you say support that person, that's going to be sort of just showing up and, and barracking and saying, you need to merge this, or is there, are there choices to be made? No, it's basically, I offered that. So basically this other person did already a PR on Thursday and he basically, mm -hmm. they, um, jumped in and, um, do it again. And I said, well, I can, for example, provide examples or right. um, stuff like this. So I just want to basically help out getting cool. PR or making comments on saying, oh, I also need this one and so on. So just basically supporting and because I said I said I had to have the time and um, to help and so I help out wherever I can, but probably the bulk of the work will be done by this other person. Yeah, my, my things, um, really minor um, specs on schemas. Um, we got the copy the copy thing done. Um, so that's using the equal sign for copy types. Um, that's implemented in JS. Um, the, the Go stuff is still catching up a little bit to the re more recent spec work. So there's a couple other things that have been merged. Can't remember what they are. But anyway, it's just, it's just catching up. Um, so the, 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 a little question about that. The parsed schema for a copy is it literally a copy of the other parse schema in no. the parse or does it, it says no. copy? It says copy and then it's up to you as an implementer to say, um, I'm going to do the copy work. Okay. All right. I need to go and deal with that. Thanks. Um, yeah. I, I mean, the feedback on that would be good though, because I had been wondering about, does that mean that everything that uses the schemas has to do this past to look for copy types first? And is that just going to be a headache? And is there a better way to do it? And I'm, I'm just not sure there is retaining the enough information, but I mean, we, we, I mean, we could, we could actually, we could actually do the copy in the parse and then store the metadata elsewhere that there's a copy going on, that one of these things is a copy. So it's transparent to the, to the schema consumer. Yes. So you could have a flag saying I'm a copy of, yeah. Yeah, whatever the original thing was. Anyway, um, that's that's something we can um, consider um, because I can see that getting in the way. So, Michael, as you uh, as you play with that, if that just becomes like this this uh, special case that has to be handled all the time and is annoying, let us know. Um, uh, been getting back to thinking more about uh, my little IPLD NPM thing. 
um, cause I really want to, I, I want to use it for more research on, um, mainly the hamped stuff, but also to, to really understand better this, you know, this cap thing we keep on going, we keep on coming up against what, what are the costs of size versus mutation? Um, and how, do, how do we, how do we even quantify that and um, and then have good answers for people that want to, you know, turn the knobs on trade-offs um, because we, we, we're really just guessing and that bothers me a bit. Um, and Filecoin is committed to um, a branching factor of 32 with their hemped, which might be fine for the Filecoin case. Um, but it, it, I think it's still a guess. So it'd be nice to have more, um, more data on that kind of stuff. So I really want to use the NPM data set to do that. And I have been working towards that off and on. Um, and aside from that, I'll, I'll, uh, I, I'm going to be off this week um, for the next three or four days, four days. Um, so not, I won't have much to report next week, um, but I w I'll be around uh, and doing a bit because um, I don't tend to, stop doing things on, on vacation. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be around and working, but, um, taking the family up the coast a bit. So cool. That's me. Cool. Um, one thing you may want to check out, uh, I have a repo now called NPM minimized and, um, it's a broadly compressed JSON object for all of the releases in every day. Um, and, and it's a much more minimal set of data about the release. Um, so just kind mm. of the owners, the depths, that kind of stuff. Um, Cause you can recreate the URL for any tarball and everything like that. So you don't really need much more. Um, so it's just very, very pared down. You may want to look at it. Um, it could be useful. Um, it's all in Git LFS in, in that repo and it updates um, every day. Sorry, I've, I've lost audio. Hang on. No worries. Oh, there we go. You're back again. Um, yes. Okay. I've, I see that now. One updated one minute ago. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's been a, that's been an interesting challenge actually because there's way too much information for each package, and um, exactly what to pull out that's useful is is an interesting question. Um, mm -hmm. I, there's stuff I want to use. There's stuff I I, I, I want to make use of for my own purposes, but. Um, there's also just stuff about the package, and then as I as I <laughs> as I think in in a in a go mindset as well, um, it's it's really different when you're dealing with this kind of data. Is that they they have to think much more ahead of time what they want to pull out. Um, and, you know, we in JavaScript we're just so used to just throw everything in a JSON object and spit it out. <laughs> um, and in Go they have to do all this planning up ahead and you know, build all the structs for all the things that you want to pull out. Mm -hmm. and, it's a real pain, and it's it's a it's an argument against just throwing everything in JSON. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, trimming things is yeah. a good idea. Yeah, yeah, you should you should check out the data set, and yeah, it's it's a much more pared down version. It's just um, if I recall, it's like the time that it was released, the version, package name, obviously, the owners of the package, and any depths and dev depths. I think that's it. So, like. It's like 500k per, per per thing per day. Yeah, there's a lot of releases. Is, it, what, is that is that is that a diff per day or? No, no. So it's it's one JSON object. The entire that's been compressed. Yeah, yeah. So the the, so the entire it's the entire registry that day. No, no, no. Every release that happened that day. Uh, so so you'll see one package and it across many of these files, but just different versions. Of them. And you're using GitHub um, Actions to pull that out. Yep, yep. It updates uh, every hour, I think. It pulls the changes feed down and does everything. Um, yeah, and then I have another tool that's running regressions on it. So I have like some, some breakdowns of um, you know, how many releases per day and per um, month and everything that different people did and different packages that were dependent upon. Um, but yeah, that, that, that could be useful. Um, but if you want, you know, if you want the readme, if you want descriptions or tags and things like that, you're not going to get them out of that data. Um, I stripped all that out. Yeah. Okay, um, that's good. I will look into this. Mm -hmm. 
um, oh, and they're, they're broadly compressed with like the maximum compression settings. So decompressing actually can take a little bit of time. <laughs> um, it's not as cheap as you would think because I'm, I'm optimizing for this space because I have to pay for it from GitHub. Um, because for LFS, you actually do have to pay for storage. Anyway, um, my updates. Um, yeah, so the, the schema gen refactor is like 70% complete, probably um, 70, 80. Um, which means that Unix SSD 2 is about 65, 70% done. Um, so I, I hope to have that finished this month, actually. Um, uh, I did a few other sort of data related things, um, but mostly I was just sick last week. I was sick like three of the five days. So that was mostly what I did. Um, as a result, I'm still iterating on that SSZ document. Um, Eric left a lot of comments in it that I still need to kind of pull apart and, and deal with. Um, but that's pretty much all I have for an update today. Did we make a commitment to them to get back to them with that? or I, I don't quite understand no, but, the process here. Um, He's trying to so, build a relationship. Yeah, we're trying to build a relationship. And like, I, I want to take a lot of what we've talked about and actually surface it with them in like a, in a useful way. Um, also, Eric is, is in Japan right now at DevCon meeting with some of them. So um, yeah. it would be nice to have some, some follow-up stuff that we can chew on as well. But I think honestly, just even having the document and talking through it with Eric is probably going to help him and his conversations that he has with them over there. So. Cool. But yeah, that was like a last minute thing we sent Eric to Japan, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I watched that. <laughs> That was fun. Okay, cool. All right, I think we are good. Anything else that anybody wants to talk about? Here? I don't have anything else. Mm -hmm. So then uh, we were pretty quick, and I closed the meeting. Uh, goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Oh.